Hey everybody, today I'm going to be showing you how super quick and easy it is to install Super ATV's whips on this Polaris Razor Turbo. So let's jump right in. The first thing we're going to do is go ahead and remove the hood from the machine. We'll just sit this aside for the time being. And we're working on a 2019 today, so all we're going to have to do right here is remove the center storage compartment. On the older models, what you'd have to do is remove the two screws located here as well as here, and then pop the dash back towards the machine. But again, we are working on a 2019, so we will not have to be doing that on this one. Just gonna remove these two push pins, and we'll just pop the storage compartment out. The next thing we're gonna do is remove both seats from the machine. Next, we're gonna remove the center console by removing the four push pins and three T30 torques. Once all the hardware is removed, we're just gonna pick straight up on the console, slide our seat belts through, as well as our boot, grab this, slide it out of the way, and then we'll set this aside. Next, we're gonna grab our power harness and feed it through this grommet right here. Before we start feeding it, we're gonna to wanna to disconnect this connection right here. That's plugged into the rocker switch. We'll just press down on this tab, pull it off, and we'll just start feeding our wires through. I'm just gonna pull these wires all the way through. Now that we have our wires fed through, we're gonna grab our two power wires. We're gonna take the ground and put it on the center, and then take the hot wire and put it on the far left. That's gonna be our keyed on source. We're gonna go ahead and remove both the nuts. We're gonna take our ground, run it back up through here, behind all the wires, try to get it as clean as we possibly can. We don't want wires hanging around everywhere. We're just gonna slide it right onto that stud, just like that. We're gonna take our nut, reinstall it. We'll go ahead and tighten the stud back up. And we'll take our hot wire, run it back in behind everything. So it's nice and clean as well. Slide it on this far left stud. Then we're gonna grab our relay and we're just gonna remove this factory screw right here that holds the bus bar onto the machine. Go ahead and remove that screw. Take the relay here, put the screw through it. And just put it right back into place. We're gonna take the portion of the harness that has the two bullet connectors. We're gonna make sure that it's running down towards the floorboard of the machine. And we'll just leave it there for the time being. Then we wanna get the harness that has the connection that we previously removed that attaches to the rocker switch. We're gonna run it right down here behind the rocker switch panel. We're gonna pop out one of the factory rocker switch covers. We're gonna take this connection here, run it through the hole, and grab our rocker switch. Let's go ahead and reconnect it, make sure it's nice and tight. And we're gonna pull our excess harness back through the hole, just like this. Then we're gonna take our rocker Slide it right into place. Make sure it still toggles good. Just take all your excess wiring, tie it up like this. We're gonna take a small zip tie, wrap around it. We don't wanna zip tie it real tight or anything like that. We just wanna zip tie it so it all stays together. Cut the excess of the zip tie off. Tuck it right back in the dash. And then I like to take a long zip tie. Run it over this crossbar right here. That way it just holds everything right in place. Next, we're gonna grab our control box wiring harness, take the wires loose, and they're labeled left and right. So we need to figure out where we want our wires to run. I'm gonna find the left, which is gonna be the driver's side. And I'm gonna run it right back underneath the center console here. You can open up this panel to make it a little bit easier. I'm gonna run it right back on top of the sway bar. I'm just gonna feed as much harness as I can back that way. That way I can go to the rear of the machine and grab it. 
Then we're gonna do the exact same thing for the opposite side. So we have our wire fed through on this side. We're gonna just slide it right up along the frame of the machine. You can slide it right up underneath of this heat shield. Then we'll just follow the frame. And you can tuck it back in behind the frame up against the plastic. So you can run your wiring harness up through this factory hole or you can follow the outside of the cage right here. And there's just enough room for your connection to come up. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna pull it tight and then just loop it through. That way it stays in place until we install our whips. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing for the opposite side. So next we're gonna be installing our bracket. We decided to go with the vertical bracket today. What we need to do to get it prepped and ready to install is take out the screws and the cage clamps. So we'll go ahead and remove those. Then we're gonna take these brackets and install them to the bracket where the whip's gonna install. We're gonna take the provided short Allen headed screw. Go ahead and get it threaded in. Make sure your lock washer's on there. And you wanna make sure it's flush mounted to the bracket here so it should look just like this. And we'll take the provided Allen wrench Go ahead and tighten it down. Take a piece of the provided foam, put it on each of these grooves where it's gonna sit up against the cage. And we're gonna do the same thing on our clamps where it's gonna go around the cage. We're just gonna take a piece long enough to lay all the way around, just like this. Now that we have our foam applied to our clamps, as well as our bracket, we're gonna take our clamps and slide them around the cage right here because we're gonna be using the vertical mount today. Now there's a horizontal mount that we offer as well, and you can mount it anywhere down through here on the crossbar, but we're gonna mount them right here so our whip will stick straight up. So there's gonna be a flat side, and then a side that has a notch in it to put your nut. We're gonna make sure they're both facing the same exact way here, and you always wanna make sure that this portion of the bracket is facing downward. We're gonna slide it into place. Gonna grab our screw here. And we're just gonna pinch this bracket as tight as we can. You're just gonna wanna get your screw all the way up to the point to where it's about to come out the other side. Then you're gonna grab your nut and slide it right into the groove. Get your bracket to where you want it and then fully tighten the hardware. Now that our bracket's installed, we're gonna take our whip and disconnect the lower portion of it. We're gonna take the hardware, we're just gonna slide it down through, and we're gonna reinstall our nut. Then we're gonna take our whip, lift up on our quick disconnect, make sure it's fully seated, and we're gonna make our connection. We're gonna make sure that you line the pins up with the holes, and then just take the nut, that's on the whip side of the harness. Just go ahead and thread it all the way down. And we're just gonna start feeding any of our excess wiring down, back towards the inside of the machine, and then we'll tie it up. Once we have our whips installed to the machine, we're gonna come back inside in the previously installed harness that we started running towards the rear that has the two bullet connectors. We're gonna connect it to the two bullet connectors that are gonna be red for hot, black for ground on the control box harness. Make sure they make a good solid connection and do the same thing for the ground. Then you also wanna go through and heat shrink both of these connections. Tie up all your wiring, reinstall your center console, your seats, your hood, your storage compartment. Now that we have everything wired up and installed, we're gonna grab this pamphlet that's gonna be included with the whips and we're gonna follow all the instructions. We're gonna to go to the Google Play or the App Store. We're gonna download the Happy Light app. I've already done this, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the app, turn the key on for the machine, and when this app opens up, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna search for all available LEDs and then we're just gonna click on it and connect. It's gonna say something along the lines of Dream-909A. That's what mine says. Yours is gonna say something a little bit different. But once we're connected, 
We can do all kinds of different stuff here. We got a bunch of different presets. You can link it to your music. You can set your own setup here. If you want to be blue, you want to do this. RGB, any of these colors, any of the music that you want to link it to that's on your phone, you can do that as well. You can adjust the speed, brightness of it. You can link your music to it and put it on a timer. And you can even link it to the sound of your voice. See, as I'm talking, it's picking it up. See, when I stop talking, it stops. When I start talking again, it'll pick back up. It'll make the lights flash. So that's another awesome feature, you know, about Super 8 TVs, five foot RGB whip lights. Now you're ready to light up the night with your new Super 8 TV, five foot whip lights. That's how super easy it is to install these whip lights. For more information on these whip lights or any of Super 8 TV's great products, feel free to give us a call at 855-743-3427 or check us out online at superatv.com. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.